لعجمي على عربي إلا بالتقوى كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Respect the brothers and sisters in Islam We have started speaking a few weeks ago about the family in Islam And we mentioned that the families in Islam is on three levels because in Islam we are taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Surah Al-Hujurat Surah number 49 verse number 13 that our extended family is the human family that is the first level the second level in the same surah if you read verse number 10 in the Minuna Yahua, our second extended family is the family of the believers. And in Surah Al Baqarah, verse 23, we read that our first family is our blood relatives. They are the first level. And on all three levels, a Muslim is required to fulfill his or her duty and responsibility according to the interaction with the rest of the two levels because there is no concept of nuclear family in Islam. What is a nuclear family? It's the most modern, late 20th century and the beginning of the first century. A nuclear family is described where the husband and wife live with their family. There is no room for the parents or any other people. It is not an extended family. It is one family unit where people might even not give any regard to their parents as far as they are going to make a decision of getting married. It may be possible that after the marriage, a month or two, you can say, Dad, I got married. Mom, I got married. Those kind of things which are taking place, the modernism taking over us and we go into those kind of system where you have no relationship on the basis of extended and traditional family. We also said we cannot understand the Muslim family unless we understand the human family, the greatest level and that is why we started understanding the two very, very powerful verses of the Ulama Quran. First one is Surah Al-Nisa, verse number one, and we went through the meaning of it. And in both verses of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, is addressing the entire humankind, saying, Ya Yuhannas, reminding them that no matter where a human being is born, no matter what is the color of the skin of a human being, no matter what is the ethnicity, what is the background, the Rabb and the Cherisher Lord and the Creator of all of them is one universal God. And whether we like it or not, this life is a temporary and when our term of life comes to an end, we will be standing before God Almighty, before this universal God and we will be given our account. And our accounts will be in written form because these two angels who are appointed on our shoulder who are told to be Kiram and Katibin they are noble writers they do not make mistakes they don't take sides they will write the righteousness if you do the righteousness they will write the evil if you do the evil but you have a bonus system if you think about doing good, one good will be returned immediately. And when you do that good, al hasanatu bi ashri amsaliya. Ten times it will be multiplied. One good, the reward is ten times. And if your good is connected to money, Surah Al-Baqarah, Verse number 261 
your reward will be multiplied to 700 times. Wallahu yudha'ifu li man yasha. Allah will multiply even those 700 as many 700 according to your intention, according to your sincerity, according to the benefit of your good to yourself, your family, and to the human society, to the community. How much you are participating in there? So, there is no doubt. That no matter how long we live, Kullu nafsin la yaqatul maut. Kullu nafsin la yaqatul maut. Each and every one of us will taste the death. And the life is temporary. Nobody can avoid the death. And when we die, there is no doubt that we will be standing before Allah on the day of judgment. Because otherwise, the whole system of this universe doesn't mean anything. If Allah has given you the freedom of choice and you make smart choices, you deserve to be rewarded tremendously. And if you made wrong choices, evil choices, obviously you will be responsible for the consequences because each and every one of us is responsible for our words and our deeds, for our interaction with our family and with the rest of the human society. If we have violated the human rights of anyone, we will be held responsible and we will have to pay for that. And if we have, through our struggle in our day-to-day -day life, become the one which is addressed in the verse number 148 of Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the humankind saying وَلِكُلِّ الْوِجْهَةٌ هُوَ مُوَلِّهَا فَاسْتَبِقُ الْسَيْرَاتِ Everybody has a motive for whatever they are doing. But you are advised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَاسْتَبِقُ Race Compete with each other in khayrat, good things, good deeds, goodness, helping others, establishing justice in your society. You know, you go to surah number 83, there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describing inna al-abarana lafi na'im, the righteous people, and their good deeds. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further advising us, saying, Wafi dhalika. That is verse number 26 of 83. Wafi dhalika falyatanafasil mutanafisun. This is something. Goodness, righteousness. You become somebody, you know, who is tremendously helping through the God. The creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that the greatest deed of righteousness is when you serve the humanity. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the verse number 40, 140 of Surah Al Imran, وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نُدَامِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ what is the meaning? The meaning is a reminder to the nations of the world. We're talking about the nations and the tribes of the world. And this circle, you know, which sometimes put you on top, other times bring you at the bottom, that is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who turns this circuit of the time. What is the meaning of that? The meaning of that is a reminder. With the superiority, with the power, comes the responsibility. When Allah says in the whole Quran, وَجَعَلْنَا كُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا We made you into the nations 
and into the tribes. So you may know the arrow is reciprocated. What is the meaning? The meaning individually and collectively. When you know about somebody else, that somebody else should know about you too. It is two-way street, it is not one-way street. So if a nation, for example, we live in America, that is considered to be the most powerful and the richest country on face of earth. That power and wealth and richness, the advancement, all that brings with, with it a responsibility. A responsibility is to use your influence, to use your power, to use your superiority in establishing equal justice, in bringing goodness to the life of the people unconditionally. Unconditionally. You can't say, if you are coming from the second sector of the communism, I'm not going to help you. If you are capitalist, I'm going to help you. If you are with this ideology or with that ideology, no. You have to prevail in establishing the justice everywhere, equal justice. The responsibility is, it is not allowed for the superior and powerful nations to take sides and to continue to bring a different kind of ideology which is different from the equality and the freedom of the humankind. That is the meaning. You can't say, I'm the most powerful country and you are the weakest country. You have no resources, therefore you become my part of me. No imperialism. That is not enough. So every nation has this direction from God Almighty to continue to struggle in finding out about each other and finding the way which they can help each other. So is the direction about the triumph. Shuruva Vakabaila. A big group is mentioned as a nation, the other group, a smaller group is mentioned as a nation, and every single member of the human society receives this address from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from God Almighty. That this address is coming to every single individual who is in this universe and the Rabbul Alameen of this universe according to the first verse of the opening chapter as we said last week is God Almighty. Then what? The next word is Inna akramakum The most honor in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most righteous one, the person with the most taqwa, and taqwa is God consciousness, taqwa is sense of companionship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your money will not make you noble, your status will not make you noble, your ethnicity will not make you noble, your background will not make you noble. What will make you noble in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your good work, your righteousness, your consciousness of the presence of God Almighty. The word Akram reminded me a very powerful story at the time of Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Amr ibn As radiallahu anhu, the founder of the Egypt, he was the governor of Egypt. And there was a horse race. In that horse race, who was involved? The son of Amr ibn As radiallahu ta'ala And what happens? There was a non-Muslim Baptist individual who was participating in the horse race as well. And he was about to win. So the son of Amr ibn As radiallahu ta'ala anhu beats him up and tells him how dumb, how dare you go in front of me. 
So this Coptic individual says, I am going to complain against you. So Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So this man says, the son of Amr ibn As radiallahu anhu, he says, you do whatever you want to do. You're not going to hurt me because Ana ibn al-Akrameen. Ana ibn al-Akrameen. I am the son of noble people, referring to his father. So what happened? This part it goes to Umar Farooq radiallahu anhu. <coughs> Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu anhu was the one who was establishing the perfect justice as we are taught through the Holy Quran and the glorious words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He immediately summoned not only the son of Amr ibn As radiallahu anhu, but also Amr ibn As radiallahu anhu. <coughs> and obviously, in Islam, the sins which are publicly committed, you have the punishment publicly applied to. So in the crowd, Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu anhu gave this whip and said to this Coptic person, take your revenge from this Ibn al-Akrameen who claims to be that he is the most noble person and he comes from the most noble community, give him the same kind of punishment as he has given it to you. So, this conflict person does. Then, Umar Farooq says to him, give a few more whips to Amr ibn As as well. Because his father allowed his son to be like this. But this conflict person said, no, no, I'm taking my death, a revenge. And I am extremely happy and satisfied that justice has on that, Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Since when you have started enslaving people when their mothers give them birth as a free individual? That is the thing. It does not matter who is in front of you, a believer or non-believer. As a human being, you need to put it in your mind and in your heart that all the human beings are equal. There is no difference between one and another. And to think that way, you have missed the point of the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you miss this point, then obviously you have missed the Holy Spirit of the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this includes the powerful words of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he reminded people and he told them that Ya Ayyuhannas, and here again I want you to notice the word Annas. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not addressing the believing community. He is not saying, Ya Ayyuhal Lazina Amal, Ya Ayyuhal Lazina Amal, no, Ya Ayyuhal Nas. Inna Rabbakum Wahid. O humankind, your cherisher Lord is one. Wa inna abakum Wahid. And your father is one. <laughs> Referring to Sayyidina Adam Alayhi Salaam. And then he said the word Allah in Arabic language is used to draw your attention. You know, behold, Allah, behold, la fadla li arabiyyin ala ajami. There's no superiority or excellence of an Arab over a non Arab. Wala li ajabiyin ala Over an Arab. And of course, we read 
In Surah number 30, verse 21 onward, Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ardi wa akhtilafi al-layli wa na'a wa akhtilafi alwanikum wa al-sinatikum. Humankind are with different colors. You know, in that surah, so Prophet using the same, you know, words. Wala li ahmara ala aswad. And a red person does not have, you can understand the word red by redneck people better in this country. Wala li ahmara ala aswad. You know, and if a red person has superiority complex over a black person, there is no room for that in Islam. Wala li aswad ala ahmar. And if it is the other way around, a black person says that I am better than this red person, this, this also has no room in Islam. What makes you better? Illa bi taqwa. What is exempted? Taqwa. And taqwa is God consciousness. Taqwa is sense of companionship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa is from the root word waqa, which means you prevent the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu anhu, once he was in his round, you know, which he constantly did to find out that every single citizen, believer and non-believer, is happy and everybody's rights are protected. So he sees a Jewish person begging in the streets of Medina. He goes to him. He says, what are you begging? We have enough money in the state treasury to help you. So the man says, no, 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 I'm not a Muslim, I'm a Jew. And I didn't think I have any share in anything in this. He said, no. Every single person who lives here and who is the citizen of this country has the full right to all the benefits. This is a welfare country. If you don't have a job, if you don't have a source of income, you will be helped by the state treasury. And he took him to the state treasury and he issued welfare and social benefits for this individual. And he told him, you don't even have to come here. Your pension will be brought to your home and you can benefit from that. It is for every human being without any discrimination between a believer or non-believer. You are already told the story of Sayyidina Ali ta'ala anhu. When this non-believer, this pagan, when he was in this battle and Sayyidina Ali anhu was fighting from our side in a defensive battle and he came over this enemy, he spitted on his face. Oh, if you have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will do what he did. He immediately moved away. He did not kill him. The man was surprised. Subhanallah, you came over me. And why did you leave me? He said, because when you spit it, now my ego has come between you and my intention for fighting this battle in self-defense. That was a greater motive and greater reason for that. Now I, I cannot do anything to you. How that is the that is the high moral. That is the moral of this story. Do we have those morals? Go across the Muslim world. What is happening in the Muslim world? What is happening in the Muslim world is tremendous, tremendous amount of three things everywhere you can see. Muslims are extremely angry. Muslims are extremely emotional. And Muslims are extremely ignorant about these valuable lessons from the Holy Quran and from the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when he said, Illa with taqwa, it is only with 
God consciousness, you can become a better individual. Inna akrama kuhinda Allahi atqadam. You can be more honorable in the sight of God Almighty. But let me tell you one secret. What is that? If you have taqwa, you don't have superiority complex. Why? With the sense of companionship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with God consciousness, you will never ever think about yourself that I'm better than the other person. You will always be humble, which we have to learn through our five daily prayer by putting our nose, the sign of arrogance, you know, that lesson that we have to be humble in order to be inna akramakum indallahi akramakum the honored one in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ala hal ballad behold did I convey the message properly to you and Imam Bayhambi has reported that the time is over brothers and sisters in Islam we will continue to learn those valuable lessons from the Quran and Sunnah. Inshallah, there is a request for rain. You know, all of us should get together and raise our hand and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the rain. We have shortage of rain in this country and inshallah there is a salat istisqa word for that you cannot just perform salat istisqa like this you have to pre pre prepare yourself you have to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have to stop if you are doing anything wrong you have to stop if you are committing any sins so inshallah we will wait for two weeks not next Friday the Friday after next after the Friday prayer we will perform salat istisqa in group in jama'ah so we can put our right, our act right in these two weeks I have seen in my childhood in India when the Imam made the announcement for that period of two weeks there were no crimes in the whole city and when the whole community offered al istisqa that prayer for rain the rain was coming while they are still performing the Salat al-Istisqa. I will say this, and 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 I will say this. Alhamdulillah, Hamdan Kafiran Tama Amar. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إرغاما لمن جحد به وكفر وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد عبده ورسوله سيد الخلائق والبشر قال الله تبارك وتعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وصام وصل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والصحابة المعين والتابعين وتبع التابعين وصلف الصالحين وأولياء الكاملين وعلماء الراسخين إلى يوم الدين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم المعين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعل من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنا اللهم وحد كلمة المسلمين اللهم ألف بين قلوب المؤمنين اللهم وفق حكام المسلمين إلى كل ما تحبه الله من القول والعمل يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر لجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات برحمتك يا رحم الرحيمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم فادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأهم وأتم وأعظم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقل الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر
Allah. Please 